The state of Alaska contains 86 active volcanoes, a number of which have erupted quite recently. Of these, the volcanoes of the Cook Inlet, which are close to Anchorage, are among the most potentially dangerous. One of these, Mount Redoubt, produced a large eruption from 1989 to 1990, which covered a wide swath of Anchorage and ash. Another seemingly active but lesser-known volcano is Iliamna, which is frequently reported as erupting due to the tall plumes of steam emitted by its summit fumaroles, which are mistaken for eruption plumes. Thus, many reports of eruptions from the 20th century were likely a case of this mistake. With this being said, Iliamna has erupted quite recently on several occasions, producing pyroclastic flows and lahars which have traveled for several miles down its adjacent valleys. The Iliamna volcano is located in south-central Alaska, where it is 74 miles southwest of Kenai. Its massive glacier-covered complex is located at the northern end of a 3-mile or 5-kilometer long ridge. This ridge represents a chain of activity which has constructed three volcanoes. To the south are the extinct south and north twin volcanic centers, while the north is Iliamna. The Iliamna volcano began forming approximately 1 million years ago when a fissure opened up north of the twin volcanic centers. This fissure soon erupted a large quantity of andesite lava which solidified into a gray volcanic cone. These explosive eruptions were volcanian in nature and resulted in short-distance pyroclastic flows due to the intermittent clogging and clearing of the eruptive vent. Over hundreds of thousands of years, these eruptions caused the volcanic cone to grow above the peaks of the two other volcanic centers via overlapping layers of lava and ash. Eventually, large glaciers grew on its edifice which began traveling down slope and carving out large fjords. These fjords offered a natural path of least resistance for future eruptive products to travel into. Iliamna has since produced frequent lava dome forming eruptions. These lava domes during their formation often partially collapsed, producing pyroclastic flows which travel down one of these channels. However, on rarer occasions, a newly constructed lava dome was able to become so large that it did not fail. Eventually, a massive amount of pressure would build and a plenian eruption would occur, coating a vast area with gray ash and superheated rock. Such large eruptions occurred in 5050 BC and then again in 2050 BC. Since 1600, Iliamna has erupted four times, the last of which occurred in 1876. Two of these recent eruptions produced short-distance pyroclastic flows, but these only traveled up to 5 kilometers distant. There are many more reports of other recent eruptions, but these likely represent periods of increased fumarole-related activity. When Iliamna does erupt again, apart from aircraft, only one area would be at significant risk, the populated place of silver salmon. Historically, smaller, even large-scale eruptions from Iliamna have generated pyroclastic flows and lahars which exclusively travel down one of the four channels carved by rivers and glaciers. So, at first glance, you might think that silver salmon is protected as it is surrounded by higher terrain which naturally blocks these two hazards. The problem is that whenever Iliamna erupts, there is a small, albeit still possible, chance of a summit collapse occurring. At the top of Iliamna, approximately 0.4 cubic kilometers of its edifice is displaying severe signs of structural instability. Fumaroles are common on this section and has turned shades of yellow as sulfur crystals have grown on its edifice. Historically, small sections of this region have collapsed, generating lahars. The issue lies if a majority of this weak area was to collapse, which could occur during any eruption. Thus, whenever Iliamna erupts, an 18-mile exclusion zone should be placed around the volcano. As a result of these hazards, the U.S. Geological Survey designated Iliamna as a high-threat volcano. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to request a specific topic, please leave a comment below. Additionally, if you wish to support this channel, consider becoming a patron on Patreon.